So a problem I see a lot of players face is that they're narrating the game in their minds rather than actively playing in it. And there, there's a key difference here. So I want to uh, bring up a quick story from Alex Caruso that I heard recently on JJ Reddick's podcast. And in this story, Alex was, uh, of course, playing for the Chicago Bulls. They were, I think, down two with maybe a minute left, and he's on defense. So it's a pretty critical possession. And during this possession, Alex being like a elite level defender is telling himself, again, narrating in his mind, he's saying to himself, I think the words he used were like, be solid, be solid. And so he's telling himself how to play defense as he's playing defense. In the process, he missed an opportunity that he would normally take advantage of to steal the ball. Philadelphia hit a three, went up five, and Chicago lost the game. So he actually cost his team the game simply by narrating the game in his mind rather than just being absorbed and playing in it. And he had a quote, actually, I'll read to you. He said, once you start thinking on the basketball court, bad stuff happens. When I'm playing my best, I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just out there reacting. And he said that normally he would just react to that opportunity to steal the ball. He'd get in the passing lane, um, you know, go down to the other end and maybe tie up the game. Maybe Chicago wins that game if he's not overthinking. But that process of narrating the game and thinking through everything that he's doing slowed him down, almost like a video that's buffering. It's like your game is actually buffering because your mind is downloading the information so much more slowly than if you were simply out there reacting. So this process of narrating the game is super, super common. And we get so trapped in our stories about the game that our attention is actually away, pulled away from the act of playing in the game itself. So when you're out there, notice... Um, when are you narrating the game and when are you actually playing in it? And what you will notice is that during your most frustrating games, there's the loudest narration going on. You're telling yourself the story of the game in your mind, talking about how, um, how you're playing, how somebody else might be playing, what somebody else might be thinking about how you're playing. And um, you're, again, just narrating the game in your mind versus during our best performances, when we're out there just like spontaneously and effortlessly reacting to everything that's happening in the moment as it's happening, there's no narration going on at all. We're, we're perfectly aware of the game without needing to think through it. And we are just spontaneously in the moment reacting to what's going on. Sort of like um, as a little thought experiment for you before we wrap up. If you're looking at this video screen in this room behind me, if you just look at it, you are probably instantaneously aware of the whole room. If you try to one by one identify all the little parts of the room, all the like EGT live pictures back there and the books on the shelf, maybe you're wondering like what books are back there, how many books are back there, um, noticing the players on the wall of fame, maybe you recognize a few of them, you're wondering how many are back there. That's a slow process rather than simply looking at it and being instantly aware. Awareness doesn't need to try to be aware, just like our eyes don't need to try to see. We are instantly aware of everything in the room the moment we look at it. We slow ourselves down and we're actually less aware of the room as a whole when we piece out and identify every single little bit of the room and we start thinking about all of the parts of the room one by one. So the thinking process is just too slow for the game of basketball. There is a time and a place for it, right? Like if you're doing a math problem, you're gonna be thinking there analytically. If you're working through um, something at school, if you're reading a book and contemplating something, these are times, if you're watching game film, something along those lines, there are times when thinking is necessary. But when you're playing the game of basketball, it's way too slow. Your game is constantly going to be buffering. So notice, when am I narrating the game versus when am I actually playing in it? And simply by becoming aware of this, when it happens, um, you can start to like bring yourself back to the game bit by bit. And we'll talk about just really simple processes to do this in future episodes and in future talks. We go into this in a lot of detail in week number one of the Deep Game program and actually train you to do this. But one uh, piece of advice that I'll offer you, 
the very first thing to do is simply slow down and soften your breath. As soon as you notice that you're narrating the game, slow down and soften your breath. The breath you could look at as like the wind of the that. mind. Whoops. Could you try again? <laughs> I have Siri jumping in. <laughs> she kind of interrupted us. Um, so as I was saying, the breath is the wind of the mind. Okay, you could look at it as an analogy. The faster you're breathing and the more sort of shallow and, and harsh your breathing is, the more active your mind and that linguistic, narrative, analytical mind is going to be. The slower and softer your breath is, the more your mind will settle. So every chance you get at breaks in the play, um, whenever you notice yourself overthinking, whenever you notice yourself narrating the game, if you're on the bench, um, whatever the case may be, before games as well, slow down and soften your breath and your mind will begin to settle. And as you do this, you may also want to simply relax your body. The more relaxed your body is, the more relaxed your mind is. We've spoken about this a lot in the past. The mind and body mirror each other, right? So relax the body to relax the mind, slow down and relax the breath. And this will settle that narrative voice in your mind and you'll be able to come like relax back into the flow of the game just like you need to um if you're thinking through everything in the room you relax into the full awareness of the room that's instantaneous rather than again like dry um like zooming in on every single little piece and thinking through all of them so it's that relaxed open awareness that we're going to be playing with uh when we're at our best and I, I know there was a lot in this episode. <laughs> we actually covered more ground than I planned on, but I hope that all helped you out. If you need to go back and listen to it again, I would really suggest um, trying out that simple sequence, like slow down, soften your breath right now, relax your body and see what effect that actually has on your mind and how does that settle your mind in. It's going to be really, really useful for you. Okay, so I hope that helped you out. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, it's Taylor. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, the best thing to do right now while it's fresh in your mind is to head over to deepgame.com and join us in our free masterclass. Now, this is where you'll learn all eight laws of the deep game and all of the fundamentals that you need to know about the part of basketball that's played with the mind. We've had players call this the best hour of basketball learning of their lives, and it's completely free right now. So head over to deepgame.com to join us, and I will see you there.